Here's the deal. macOS Monterey ruined Apple's Pro apps at least Final Cut and Compressor. I've been using Final Cut ever since the end of 2014 when I bought it on my original 13-inch MacBook Pro. And at the end of 2017, I bought Compressor because I needed a way to export HEVC files as at the time, Final Cut did not support that in its built-in exporter. Ever since I bought Compressor, I've been using it as my main video encoding software because I really like being able to change the bitrate on the videos that I export and being able to export in batches instead of just one at a time. And ever since I've been using both of these apps, it's been great with the exception of my Mac Mini on macOS El Capitan back in 2015, I believe it was. But other than that, it's been great up until now. Up until launch day of macOS Monterey, my iMac was still running macOS Catalina, and the reason for that is simply just because I didn't like how macOS Big Sur looked or sounded. And if I'm being completely honest, I still don't really like the look of Monterey. I don't really like the new sounds either. And let's get into why I even upgraded to macOS Monterey from Catalina to begin with. Take a look at this screenshot from the Mac App Store of Final Cut Pro. Look a little closer. Certain features require macOS Monterey. Certain features required macOS Monterey and the newest version of Final Cut Pro and Compressor require macOS Big Sur 11.5.1. When I saw that, I said, all right, the time was gonna come eventually. I'm gonna upgrade my iMac to macOS Monterey on launch day. And that was a big mistake on my part. In my defense for upgrading on launch day, before macOS Big Sur, I have upgraded my iMac to the newest macOS on launch day for every single version of macOS. When I bought this iMac back in 2016, it came with macOS Sierra, and then I upgraded to High Sierra on launch day with no issues, and same with Mojave and Catalina. Something interesting I noticed about the newest versions of Final Cut and Compressor, even though they require macOS Monterey for certain features, they came out a few days before macOS Monterey officially shipped. It really just seems like Apple didn't test Final Cut, Compressor, and maybe even macOS Monterey properly. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you the issues I'm having with Final Cut. I'm gonna go ahead and launch Final Cut out of my dock right here. Now I know it's not a screen cap, but I don't want anyone going in the comments and saying, oh, your screen cap is taking up system resources and that's why it's taken so long. So here you go, this is just my iPhone pointing at the screen, showing you how bad this is. And we're still loading. This isn't slowed down or anything, this is straight up real time. I also forgot to mention, switching events does this too. Isn't this great? Yeah. I should have started a stopwatch for this one too, because this has been about five minutes now. It's just been sitting here trying to load a freaking event with a sprinkler video in it. Hey, there we go, finally. Now, if you think the Final Cut issues are bad, take a look at what happens when I even just try to use Compressor for what it was intended for. So we're still using the camera pointing at the screen method because I don't want to take away any system resources for this. I'm going to drop my default 30 frames per second preset onto this video and just hit start batch. Now it'll sit here, and that progress bar will not move. And then eventually it'll finally fail with an unknown error. What's the deal? Alright, I don't get it. Now I know I can use my compressor presets in Final Cut's built-in exporter, but that takes longer, okay? Outside of YouTube, I do a lot of professional video production work, and having this happen is not fun. The advantages with Compressor where you can put save locations in your presets and those don't translate when you import them to Final Cut's built-in exporter. I have no idea why, but every time I export a video, I have to tell it where to export to. With Compressor, it was just get a whole bunch of videos lined up, drop your presets in, hit start, and they would all go exactly where they need to, in their intended formats and bit rates. Now I know someone's gonna ask me in the comments, oh, why don't you just switch to Adobe Premiere and use Media Encoder? Here's the issue with that, all right? I have Adobe Creative Cloud, I know how to use Premiere and After Effects and 
media encoder and everything. I'm even recording the audio for this video through Adobe Audition. The issue with switching from Final Cut to Premiere after so long of exclusively using Final Cut is all of my templates and everything I need to edit YouTube videos and client videos, all the templates for that are built in Final Cut. I would have to rebuild everything in Premiere and that would take a lot of time. This is funny, this is something I didn't even plan for. Just now, Audition totally froze up. It's not something that I want to deal with. I have no idea what the deal is, I have no idea what's going on, and I don't know why all of these issues are happening that I've never seen before. Audition straight up just locked its audio meters and stopped recording. It just started recording a flat, silent track for no reason. It almost seems like the iMac like lost communication with my microphone for a second. I don't know, it's working now, so I'm just gonna try to get this video done before it happens again. What I was trying to say was, it's not a good feeling when you've spent $300 on Final Cut and then an extra $50 on Compressor. And keep in mind, these are both Apple-made apps running on Mac OS, which is Apple's Mac operating system, just broken after a new Mac OS update and updates to the applications that required the Mac OS version that broke them. The irony here is, you know, even with my little disaster I just had with Adobe Audition, Premiere Pro, After Effects, and Adobe Media Encoder still work perfectly fine, and those are third-party apps. Apple did not develop any of Adobe's apps. Aside from issues with Final Cut and Compressor, I've also had issues just with my iMac in general. I'll hit sleep from the menu bar, you know, and go and do something, and then I'll come back, and it's back awake. Nothing touched it. I have the ability for Bluetooth devices to wake the iMac shut off, because I thought that might be causing the issue when I first saw it, but no, it still happens. Now here's what's weird about it. I had to disable my unlock with Apple Watch feature, because if you, if the iMac gets unlocked, and then you hit sleep again, it'll wake up, and then the Apple Watch will unlock it, and then you go back and put it back in sleep, and it just is an endless loop. If the iMac doesn't get unlocked, and it just stays on the lock screen until the screen times out, it doesn't do it anymore. I have no idea why that's happening, but it's really annoying. It, it's a little thing, yes, but it's annoying. Okay, this was an expensive computer. I haven't had any issues with it before updating to Mac OS Monterey. I'm glad I didn't have this issue, but another issue people have been having with Monterey is it actually just bricks their entire machine, like in a way that it won't turn on anymore. There's been reports of people updating to Mac OS Monterey, and you know, your Mac restarts, three, four, maybe five times during an update, that's normal. But a bunch of people are having issues where they will update and it'll do the first and second restart and then it'll shut off and never come back on. If it's a MacBook, they'll plug it in, hit the power button, nothing. If it's an iMac or another Mac desktop, they'll unplug it, plug it back in, hit the power button, nothing. Just totally bricked. Basically the message I'm trying to send here, if you haven't updated to Mac OS Monterey, don't until at least 12.1 comes out, and if you haven't updated Final Cut to 10.6 or Compressor to 4.6, don't, because you won't be able to use them the way you used to. You'll be sitting there for 5 to 10 minutes just switching between projects and Final Cut and waiting for it to launch, and then Compressor's just gonna sit there and sit there and sit there, and then eventually fail. So that's the deal, guys. The point of this video is not to tell you that I'm gonna be dropping my every Friday video release schedule. I'm actually gonna be releasing more for the rest of the year, but we'll talk about that in a different video. The point of this video is to call out Apple because this, this is totally unacceptable. This ruined my workflow. I can no longer do my job efficiently. A part of it also is just to prove that I'm not one of the people that's like, oh, anything Apple does is totally okay, because that's not true. I thought it was stupid when they took the charger and the headphones out of the iPhone boxes. I think this is freaking stupid. And I also thought it was stupid when they removed all the ports from the MacBooks, except USB-C in 2016. Anyway, guys, that is going to be it for this little rant. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you get a little look into my world of issues that I sometimes have to deal with doing professional video production. But until the next video, that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.